Hello Pisces! Thank you very much for tuning in to this week's read. For the main part of the read, I'm going to use this one. Tarot in Wonderland by Barbara Moore. Illustrated by Eugene Smith. Uh, website's on the bottom. I don't know if you can hear my cat, but he's being a little jumpy jumpy. Uh, Llewellyn.com is a website for this one. If you want to freeze frame, feel free to, feel free to check that out. He heard me turn on the camera, and he's just like, hey, that's my cue. I'm like, okay, it's not, but all right. <laughs> it's not, but okay, bud. Uh, supportive Oracle Cards. The M Elemental Oracle Cards by Stacy DeMarco. Uh, artwork by Kinga Brachiga? Brachigi? I'm messing that up. I'm bad with names. I really am. There's a spelling. That way you can find it if you want. Is there a website for this one? Rockpoolpublishing.com. It says Rockpool Publishing. I know there's a .com somewhere. It's Rockpool Publishing. I believe it's .co or .co.uk or Rockpoolpublishing.com. Either one. It says Rockpoolpublishing.co. I don't know if that actually does anything. But I've seen it on other things. If you look up Rockpool Publishing, you'll find it. All right. What do we have for Pisces? I'm a Pisces, too. Because I'll say it somewhere along the line. Anyway, why not just start out with it? Just for fun. Is this going to be a really good one? Because it looks like it. I'm not guaranteeing that. It just Pressure? Pressure? What's the pressure about? You got pressure at the bottom. There is pressure here. It's starting off with pressure. And, 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 a, and a phone that needs to stop. <laughs> um, ironically, I don't think it's that bad. I think it's about to change. Okay, I'm seeing some cards here in the center, so the world is coming in. If this reading is hitting for you, whenever you're watching it, and if we're going to be fair, you don't actually have to be a Pisces, but if you're just, like, catching into the vibe, you want to watch the video, and it's just, like, linking in. Up until this point, and maybe still at this point, things have been, like, heavy. And I know that's subjective to how you feel about it, because it's what you're dealing with, how you relate to it. So some people it's overwhelming, other people it's obnoxious. Um... I, like I said, I am a Pisces. I have, like, waves of it. It just kind of sh shows up, and then I'm like, I don't know. For some reason, it just kind of stops. I don't know what that's about. But that energy, if you have these waves of, like, things are heavy. Things are heavy. That's the best way I can say it. It's, like, emotionally heavy. That's You're going into a different time frame. you got the devil card that's being released. When I see the world card next to the devil card, it, to me, it's being released. You're releasing that energy. Um, to be fair... When I'm recording this, it is in Capricorn. And the Devil card is a Capricorn card. Um, if you're watching this at a different time of year, I feel like the trigger is like when the moon or something leaves Cam uh, Capricorn. There's some like, there seems like there's a Capricorn trigger here. It could be a person, just to be fair. Something is kind of like moving away from you. That's what's going to trigger the change. So it could be the next time the moon is in Capricorn, which it, every month it cycles through all the signs the moon does. Or it could be when Venus leaves Capricorn, depending on when you're watching this. That's when the stress is going to leave. I don't know why Venus, because is Venus, what is Venus in right now? I don't know. I really don't know. Um, there could be a Capricorn connection, or take it with a grain of salt. Because I'm getting like, you're making it through, you got it, and you feel like you've got it. I feel like, for those of you who are connecting to this energy, it's kind of like, it's not the first time this has happened. It's not the first time you've been through this. But knowing that it's about to lift again is a good thing. It's kind of like it's a seasonal thing, maybe, for some of you. Or it's just once in a while, it's just something triggers it, and it just you feel that way. That energy is going to leave. Like, you're going into another phase. Because you've got success coming in, somebody looking out for you. And the biodome. The animals card makes me feel like somebody's looking out for you. I don't think it's, I don't think it's like a bad thing, like, not belittling or anything, but like somebody's looking out for you. I keep getting that with the animal card. It could literally have something to do with animals for you. General read, you decide what it means. But you got success coming in. The biodome makes me feel like this is in within your known your known group. Your known group. Like the biodome to me is like it's not the whole world, it's like your piece of it. So 
somebody already in your piece of the world is looking out for you. So like somebody that you're used to, it's not a new person, but somebody is looking out for you. They're also trying to help you find more success. There is supportive energy here for you. It's time for this moment to move on. It's the Three of Wands that sometimes literally talks about travel, but sometimes it talks about your ship coming in, like your moment is coming in, like a better moment is coming in. Somebody is looking out for you, but it's tricky because I'm like, how much effect do they really have on this? I feel a little, like I'm thinking that somebody is looking out for you, but they might not have effect on this. So it might be kind of like, just so you're aware of it thing. Uh, that is air. Seven of Swords reversed is like somebody trying to make up for something. They're seeing something going a little wobbly for you. The person looking out for you, I don't think has anything to do with the success coming in for you. But I feel like, just so you're aware that the energy is there, somebody is trying to look out for you. And I feel like they're a little bit, maybe a little bit off-center for what you actually want. Um, reserve your right to not tell people what you don't want to tell them. That's great, isn't it? Um, how do I say that a little better? So in other words, if somebody's asking you questions and you feel like that's crossing a line or that's, like, I don't want to talk about that with them, Change the subject or avoid them. Some people just, if you're in their presence, they just keep going with the same question. They just won't leave you alone. Remove yourself from their presence. Just because they care about you and just because they have good intentions doesn't mean they can't be toxic. It doesn't mean we have to have a negative, like, time out. But, we, you know, just distance yourself from that. Distance your, Don't feel bad about distancing yourself from that. That's not where the good energy is coming from. And I don't think that person means negativity towards you. Um... Especially if they feel like they're entitled to information and you're like, no, you're not. I reserve your right to not tell them in whatever means you feel necessary. There's some like root going around, like we have to work around them. It's weird because they're very well-intentioning. Well, they have a lot of well-intentions, but it may be like overbearing to the point where it's, it's pushing toxic if it's not toxic. So... I feel like they're just giving you a heads up. If that kind of comes your way, move around it, work around it. Because um, your success is coming in in a different way. It's none of their business is what I'm getting. You are more self-sufficient than people give you credit for. If you make a decision that you're going to do something, you can make things happen. Um, something is coming your way. Something else is coming your way. I don't know what it is, but it's coming. We're getting there. Um, better things... Not better things. How do I say it? Things work out better if you work around that energy for now. I also feel like if you have other other people to talk about what's going on, this is complicated to me. So the, the toxic energy that's overbearing, I don't feel like we can confide in that energy at this moment. But there are there should be other people around you that you can talk things out with, even if it's a therapist. If you're worried about what you're going towards, you're like, I don't know if this is a good idea for me. Always have somebody to talk it off, talk off, talk about it with. It's not coming across, right? Like, I feel like I'm missing something. The energy's coming across weird. It's like, I feel like I'm like dodging one thing and trying to talk to something else. It's weird. Seven of Swords again, reversed. Like, we're getting away from something and we're avoiding the Tower card. Some the, the, the good energy that somebody's looking out for you is it's, I feel like it's trying to be controlling and we're trying to get around that. That I, I just feel like that's not a good person to confide in. Even if they have good intentions, don't confide in that person. That's the point. Hopefully you have somebody else to confide in to talk about things you want to talk about if you want to work out some stuff. That's what I need to say. Okay. It, I feel like it gets really muddled and I feel like this person does care, but I'm like, they're just not fitting me right now and I don't want to do this. So it's kind of like working through that energy. Something really good that's very personal to you. When I get the hearth for this situation with the Ace of Cups, it's very personal to you. Um, I feel like this is something you might keep very private at first. Maybe it's a project or a relationship or a, a new friend or, I don't know, maybe a business venture. Um, hopefully you have somebody to talk this out with. The person that's well-meaning but toxic, not that one, but somebody else. Hopefully there's another person for you to talk this out with because I feel like having another opinion, having another voice is a good thing. Um, it's good that if you want to keep it to yourself, but just don't keep it so much to yourself that maybe some something comes in here that's not good. I feel like it's good to have somebody to bounce things off with. You just got to decide who that 
who the right person for that is. Because something good is coming in. There's a lot of, like, moving on from pressure but making a change. Maybe making a change that not everybody's going to agree with. But it's kind of like, well, it's not for them to agree with. Um, life is very different from when I was younger. <laughs> We're gonna mi If we minus 30 years for my life, life was a lot. The, the world was a different place, at least what I'm used to. And um, it's better, in my opinion. So there may be people who still have that type of mentality that aren't updated to current times that are going to clash with where you're going. Maybe you've moved on, moved forward, and they just haven't, and they don't want you to, because if they can't, they don't want you moving on without them. Be aware of that clash, just to be fair. Um, there's a lot of busy, busy energy coming in in the next three months. A lot of busy, busy energy. Uh, Ten of Swords reversed. We're letting go of stress. Ten of Swords reversed is good, in my opinion. And then the Justice card. Um, you're changing... Something major is changing in your life. You might be handling certain relationships differently. I'm wondering if it's partly that person that's very well-meaning but still toxic. Um, you might be changing how you how often you see them when you connect with them and what terms you connect with them. You might have to put that more in your control. Maybe not in the sense of like controlling how they treat you when you're when you're in their presence, but like maybe like I'm not going to go hang out at their house anymore. When we see each other, I'll be more in a group setting and then when they get to be a little bit much, I'll just exit the situation and I'll just kind of let them figure out that like they're being too much. So when they when they do that, I'm not going to argue with them. I don't want to, but I will disconnect from them and like sometimes that's the way you got to handle things just because they want to be difficult doesn't mean you have to deal with it in, on their terms some people don't like that it, I, I understand what people might see that as passive aggressive but if somebody's aggressive towards you doesn't mean you have to match their aggressiveness in my opinion um you just start pulling back distancing yourself and then when they ask especially if you're able to talk with them by a text you're like well you're being too much so i'm backing off and when they complain you just take a while before you answer that text and if you, if they end, and if and this is my opinion, if they send you like fifteen texts, I usually I just respond like I'm not reading all that. I don't know what you're going on about, but if if you're stressful for me, I'm not going to do this. I'm just because you want to send me a tirade in text doesn't mean I'm going to read it. <laughs> I don't know why I'm going there with that. It might take some time to really get used to it and get through it. Um, I some I have done that before, where like somebody will send me a tirade in a text, and I'm like, listen, I'm not reading that. I just, I'm not going to do it. You want to send 50 texts, you're wasting your time. And I'm making them, I'm making sure they realize they wasted their time just because they want to vent or blow up on me on that. I'm like, if it's that bad, like, just stop talking to me if, if it's that bad. Like, I don't know. I, I don't have a lot of patience for it sometimes. And I'm like, listen, calm down. If you can't calm down, I'm back, I'm backing off. If you're upset about that, I'm not reading your monster texts. I'm not going to, I'm not going through the tirade. I'm not going to do it. Um, and that might be how you have to handle that. Because I see better things are coming in, but we might have to kind of like, cut that off, calm that down. I don't know if you have to completely cut it out of your life, but it's like finding a way that works for you to handle it. Um, if you don't have the energy or the desire to like meet that head on, it's just not your thing, you don't have to. There's other ways to handle it. I think that's the point. Just because you can't meet this energy head on and you know match it energy for energy doesn't mean you can't find a different way to handle it. And I feel like people get upset with the whole passive aggressive thing, but if that's the best you can do to calm down a toxic situation, then that's the best you can do. Hopefully it gets better later, but if that's what you need to do to preserve your own emotional security, then that's what you got to do. Um, I would also recommend if you're dealing with situations like that, like try to find a therapist. Um, I'm a big fan of Paul McKenna books. So maybe Paul McKenna, British author, go down that line if that helps. This might be a temporary solution, or it may be one of those solutions that ends to like move it, removing somebody from your life long term if you keep going that way. So just be well aware of that as well. Are we good? Good. Yeah. Remember, good things are coming in, but we have to like. I feel like we have to calm that energy down because it might be it might be impeding the good that's coming in. So we have to kind of like shut that down, calm that down one way or another, so that we can allow the full flow of the positive energy, the good things to come into you. Am I really done this time? Because I thought I was done a minute ago. Um, <laughs> I think we're good. All right. Thank you for watching. I hope that helps. If you'd like a direct reading from me, shoot me an email, jamesforastral at gmail.com. This is james, the number four, astral at gmail.com. If you're interested in the donation information, that's below. Same email. 
Thanks again for watching and have a great day.